Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And we are live here once again today with the Lopers, and it's so hey, exciting hi, to you. see you. Besides the live podcast, we're on a live Zoom as well, so beautiful to finally see the faces, put it with the voice. So hello, how are you? Hi, Jill. How are you hey, doing? Hey, Jill. We are wonderful. It is so good to see you, Jill. <laughs> you too. Stacey, Joaquin, the Loper family. Please introduce yourself to everyone today. Hi, everyone. My name is Joaquin Loper. And I am his wonderful wife, Stacey Loper. And oh. we are blended and winning. And so are you. Yes. Hey, that's right. Yes. Blended and winning. Where'd that come from for new listeners out there? Tell me what is blended and winning? How'd you come oh, up man. with that title? Oh, uh, that's that's <laughs> going to be a whole segment, Jill. Uh, <laughs> uh, but seriously, blended and winning came from a time when we were struggling to find who we were yeah. as husband and wife. Mm -hmm. And with the, the, the different dynamics that we brought into our marriage. Yes. And the, the name was dropped into my spirit just for blended and winning because we're all a blended family. And yes. Winning. yes, and not just from a standpoint of I had kids coming into our relationship, into our marriage, it was also a matter of blending families, period, in-laws, yes. friends, <laughs> You know, and coming from different sides of the track is, you yes. know, you put everything in that blender and you get it to mix together so that everything can be well blended. The texture is just right for you. Yes. And yes. I'm telling you, that's what blended and winning is for us. It's not just on a community level. It's not just yeah. on a family level. This yeah. is talking about the world. world. Yes. Got it. The world level. Yes. But in sometimes you put things in that blender and it doesn't taste so good together. Yes. But you make yes. it work. But you make it work. Yes, <laughs> you do make yes. it work. You, you get that, you know, you get that right strainer out mm -hmm. and kind of get those lumps up Little out of the gritty. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I don't like pineapples or mangoes in my smoothie because it just leaves that texture <laughs> yeah. in my mouth. And then they I'm get like, stuck oh. in your teeth and you're like, oh, oh. <laughs> and, and, and with that being said, since you don't like those things, sometimes you have to get used to some things that are good for the blend for the blend so, that is true you're right about mm -hmm. that i like that yeah. I like that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you gotta learn to give to take to adjust okay. to accommodate and it's hard sometimes right so yeah. so you two are here today as always to help other people like yourselves individuals couples uh, tell yes. us what you do exactly well we're we're both um marriage counselors grief mm -hmm. coach well our marriage coaches grief coaches um my wife specializes in grief. <laughs> uh, we're also uh, life. So coaching. you better not cause her any. That's right. I, Makes I, her job I, a little harder. <laughs> I, I, try, okay. I try not Maybe to. Maybe that's why she became an expert in the field. I'm just joking. <laughs> I could joke with the two of you. I, I could joke it, with you. It is. It has helped our marriage. I'll tell you this. It definitely has. I'll tell you that. But <laughs> you're like, oh, he grieving. Let me let him just grieve. <laughs> Now, you guys are from Birmingham, Alabama. You work yes. with people virtually all over. So let's continue. So as marriage counselors, grief counselors, what else would you specialize in? Uh, life coaching, mm -hmm. uh, motivational speaking. And, and business coaching. Business coaching. Yes, yeah. consulting. So it's, it's all the way around because people deal with so many different things. So when you talk about blended and winning, you truly talk about blended and winning. Yes. And see, it's the and that makes the big difference. Okay. Because you can be blended, but there's a possibility you're not winning just yet. It's true. It's true. Mm -hmm. and, and the key words are there are just not just yet. Not yet. It's not that you're not you're not capable of winning, but it's learning how to win together. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How to really bring the and into place mm -hmm. to like to make it stand out because I'm blended and I'm winning. Good. For example, whenever I speak to people, I, I never I never give blended and winning the um, pedal stool, or I never get myself a pedal stool without saying, and my wife, or I couldn't do this without my wife, because we are blended and winning. I'm not an individual anymore. Mm -hmm. Once I said I do, she is a part of everything that I do. And my mm -hmm. success comes from a lot of things that she does that people don't see. Yeah. Vice versa, so. And vice versa, my success yeah. comes from a lot of things that people don't see Joaquin do as well. Yeah. So like like putting up with her, you know. Yeah, just, like that's a totally yeah. different like that's a whole segment within itself yeah, putting up with Stacey. That's, that's segment, so it's yeah. like you guys are so cute. I <laughs> love you too. I wish you'd be closer. <laughs> you guys are the cutest couple ever. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 
So talk to me. So this is obviously the first Zoom we've done. Uh, we're live on the radio, but so I'm going to give you the platform. What did you want to start off today for everyone? Because this is huge. This is you guys. I mean, you do the marriage reboots. You do. So there's so much to you. So you yes. guys take the lead. Go ahead. All right. So what we want to start is today is self self worth. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Because so many people, and especially in this season, you know, this is the season yeah. of love, of peace, of joy. So many people are grieving, and yeah. one of the things that a lot of people are doing in this season is they are devaluing themselves. Mm-hmm. Like they yes. are not fully living up to their potential for some reason or another. And one of the reasons why Keenan and I were, were talking before getting onto the podcast, where we were talking about one of the main reasons is everybody places their value on the sum of their mistakes. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. They should have passed and see. Mm-hmm. They are they are defined by failed relationships, having kids out of wedlock. Mm-hmm. They're defined by divorce. They're yep. defined by their education. And if they don't have all of these things behind their name, they don't feel worth worthy yep. of what they know they'll they could have. Yep. And so they don't seek that top potential. They don't seek everything that they're worth because it's the sum of my mistakes. Well, I did this. I did that. And sometimes that, that leads to people settling. Yes. Yeah, settling and, and accepting um, less than what they are yeah. truly being worth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. And so when we talk about that, Joaquin makes a valid point is women, and this is just in general, women always seem to think I am the prize. Okay. And mm-hmm. I want to say that today. Right? Uh-huh. We seem to yes, think that we're the yes. prize. Okay. <laughs> but men are a prize too. Yes. And we have to stop thinking that, oh, when they get us, it's this, it's that, it's that. And sometimes we devalue our men because of the way we think about ourselves. Yep. And so we have to think of it from a two-way street, okay? Mm -hmm. The street runs both ways, okay? So you both have to put in. You both have to be willing to step up to the plate and give in your area of strength Mm -hmm. and then grow in your area of weakness. Yeah especially when you decide to get into that relationship so that you do not devalue yourself. You know, Joaquin is wearing this specific t-shirt and I wasn't going to mention it. I really was not going to mention the t-shirt that he's wearing today. So Joaquin is wearing this that says Uh, 11th place wins. Okay. 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 (laughs) And I am wearing Satan. Not today. Uh (laughs) Not today, Satan. Okay. (laughs) I love it. So cute. Yes. So when we talk about this was not playing. It was not playing. Yeah, it really wasn't. Playing. It just really fell into the whole segment. Uh, when we talk about your self-worth, you know, Joaquin had this, this shirt made ex- about a year ago now. Yeah. Um, because I have been proposed to eleven times. I'm the eleventh. Yeah, what? what? I'm waiting for my first. God bless you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So yes, I have been proposed to eleven times. And the- he's the eleventh proposal. So wait, wait, but yes. you said yes how many times? Three, three. three. Yes. Okay. Three oh, times. I'm just curious I about did. the others who lost out. <laughs> <laughs> so when they proposed to you, did you say no to the other ones? No offense to you, one second, but or do you no, have like I'm a collection of engagement rings? That's so no, I do not have a collection of engagement rings. That, <laughs> that was one of my questions like, long time ago. I was like, do we need to because that's them? not a bad thing. Maybe you yeah. get uh, your mortgage paid. <laughs> hey, like I like I told her, I don't mind being the eleventh. That just means I'm number one twice. So I'm good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's it's, awesome. It's that's awesome. Third time's a charm. Yeah. <laughs> third time is definitely a charm because baby i'm not doing this again joaquin signs all of my cards whenever he buys me something you're last husband i'm yeah. like you are so yeah. right yeah, last husband. <laughs> oh, good. You, have to, you have to speak those things into existence and one thing i i i um when i met my wife learning about her past and she learned about mine i tried not to hold her past decisions above her oh wow I, because this is the thing i always viewed her um as in comparison to me, and I was like, man, I've done worse. Mm-hmm. I've done this. So I can't point at her and say I demonize yeah, her. Yeah, and yeah, I've yeah. Her. yeah. And so don't think that she has me in is the marriage mm-hmm. part and the kids. And truth be told, if you know <laughs> if it wasn't so I could <laughs> I couldn't hold that against her because I'm not perfect. 
No, no. no but, but when, they, when they come talking about self-worth, man, you have to just know who you are, despite where you come from, despite what family you're in, um, knowing who you are. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people base themselves off what they do and not just who they are. You, you are not your, you're not your education. You're right. not your, um, um, your past trans, your right. past traumas. Mm -hmm. You're not what your family makes you out to be. Yeah. I mean, you are who you are, who God has you to be, and you have to be comfortable in that role. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so when you know who you are, you know, your why. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that we help our clients identify is what is your why? Like, why do you react and respond the way you do? Why do you approach and deliver yeah, yeah. in the manner? Why do you approach and deliver in the manner in which you approach and deliver? Yeah. You know, are you always approaching in the defense? Because mm. that's all you've ever done is you put up these defense mechanisms so that when someone comes at you, you always feel like you're under attack. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you got to be careful about or, that. How yeah. Yeah, or, yeah, you're right. Or are you mm -hmm. responding because this is what your family's always said you've done? Mm -hmm. You're this right. Is what your family is defined as, mm -hmm. and that's not, your family doesn't define you as an individual. Right. Mm -hmm. You represent your family, but you represent it in the way that you are uh, purpose to walk this earth. Mm -hmm. Got for, it. For, for instance, my, uh, my parents were divorced after 20 something years of marriage. Um, I'm not sure. My wife never. I, I never really, I never got to see marriage. Like mm -hmm. in my family, period, to be honest with you, I never really saw marriage. So when I, I didn't have an example, I didn't have a um a blueprint to go by to be honest with you when you talk about marriage when you talk about commitment when you talk about give and take I didn't have that it was very um and I'm just going to be real and transparent it was very selfish it was mm -hmm. very all about me yeah. and I'm, I'm going to be honest with you that's what I bought to the table I bought being very selfish like it's all about me it's going to be my way or no way at all it's going to be my way or the highway hence 11 yeah proposals. you know so it's yeah. like you know, so that's the mentality that I came with. And I'm going to be honest with you, upon yeah. meeting Joaquin, it was Joaquin that made me see it from a different perspective. Wow. Like, you, I'm, I'm going to need you to see things a little bit different because you're very selfish. Like, and I had two kids, I loved my kids, but I was still selfish. Mm -hmm. When you talk about getting into a relationship, I was selfish. And yes, people, I did tell her just like that. You're selfish. Like, you're just selfish. You're selfish. Yeah. And he helped you see those things. I mean, oh my goodness. Wow. Yes. Had he not shared his honest opinion of what yeah. he saw? Yeah, then you wouldn't know. Then wow. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't have an opportunity to change wow. it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, you know, that's why we have the relationship that we have now. Yeah. Plus, he can tell me stuff well, this like is this. great. Look, look, look. I started dating someone recently who I've known for like 10 years, and he's been asking me out for a long time. And I keep saying, no, 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 no. Long story short, I finally said yes over the summer. So we are officially dating now, right? But this is all new to me. I've never been married. I have two kids of my own. And he comes to me the other day and he says this, which really hurt me. He says, you know, you have a lot of narcissistic ways. And I'm like, what? I'm like, do you know the definition of narcissistic? And he's like, you're narcissistic. So I don't mean in a good way. He's like, you're a good narcissist. I, so I look up the definition. I'm like, I am not self-absorbed. I am not thinking I'm better than anyone. I said, you don't know me well enough yet. He's like, well, you are demanding control. I said, damn right. I'm demanding and controlling. That's all I've ever been, but I am not narcissistic. Narcissistic. I'm giving, I, I looked at the definition. I almost started to cry. I said, if you really think I'm like this, then either I'm really like this and I'm blind or I'm not seeing mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. And then when we went through the definition, he's like, okay, you're not narcissistic, but there is the one part in there that says you're controlling or I'm um, demanding. I said, I am. That's all I've ever known. And I live by myself. I do things by myself. I didn't have a family example. My parents were together, but didn't get along. So I never trusted men. So I'm very, he says, you just don't trust people. I said, I don't. I said, but narcissistic is a really bad qualities. I said, I looked at all 10. I'm like, I'm one of them of demanding. I'm like, it's like, you're right. You're not. So I felt better. But again, he pointed it out to me. So yeah. I am demanding and I know that. And I own that. Yes. I want things done a certain way. So I have to try to go ahead. Oh, no, 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 no. I just want oh. to piggyback on what you're saying. Yeah, you were like, I want to say something. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> oh, please don't don't think that's a bad thing. I, I, I tell Demanded. people this all the time. My wife's, her strong will, yeah. her, her demanding ways, those are pluses to our marriage. That's a plus to who she is. See, one thing I realized about my wife, uh, even upon marriage, even us, upon us going through our tough times, if anything happened to me, she could hold it down. Mm -hmm. So her yes. control ways, her demanding ways and stuff, those are pluses for us. 
you just can't control the demand, uh, be demanded to me. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Do, you're not going to control me. We're going to work together. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. No, I don't want to control it, like, but I control like the circumstances, like the yeah. house has to be a certain way and there's no dishes left in my sink at night. And that's <laughs> it's my house. And then you come here and it's like, well, why? And I'm like, this is how I operate. If you know, okay, maybe if we live together, things could be a little different, but I'm into toilet seat down. I'm very like OCD about certain things and me it too. comes across. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like, well, you're demanding. I said, but I'm not asking anything of you, but you are my house. So guess what? I am asking you to put the dishes away because that's part of my routine because that gives me more stress to have to do it myself later and you know so again I'm I'm not a real I'm not a bitch I'm not and I'm so I was so crushed when he told me later on look up the definition of narcissistic and then you know me a little bit but if I was narcissistic I would not be the field that I'm in I would not be a good mom it's like a mean person I'm like I'm like a devil I'm like no but then I'm like maybe I am and I look and I'm like thank god but so anyway, long story short, you're right. So people see you differently and you have to realize, well, maybe there is something about it that has to change. So I know the demanding part, but I'm not demanding of him yet. And that's what I was going to say, you know, really until, until you're actually married, and I mean the day of marriage and I say I do, there is no, there are no rules to say that I have to change who I am. Well, yeah, that that's it. And he says the other day, he's like, you know, I don't like that he smokes and I, and he won't smoke around me. I said, but I don't like it. I said, but stop. You know what? I can't tell you not to do it. You are who you are. You know, I'm not going to change fully. I'm like, it's up to you what you want to do. Will I kiss you? No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's your decision. But I've been told by men so many times what not to be, what not to do and felt controlled by men that I like, I, do what you want to do. Be your own person. I cannot tell you, and I don't want to be a parent to anyone because I felt that way before. So if you really want to smoke that makes you happy, then do it. But and, just and know my things. boundaries. I'm not kissing you. But and this is the thing. They're, they're called I'm not going to tell someone what to do. I, I've had that my whole life and I don't like that feeling. Yep. Even yes. though we know it's bad for us. My mom got a lung cancer. It doesn't matter. You are an individual. So you also can't tell someone how to be either. That's right. We you call can. them, we call them non-negotiables. We have yeah, non-negotiables. Right. There were mm-hmm. certain non-negotiables that I was, I was, I wasn't coming with. I wasn't right. coming with, nor was I accepted from her. Right. And guess what? If, if, if you were not willing to change the non-negotiables, I was willing to walk away mm-hmm. and I'm cool with that. Mm-hmm. I'm cool. Cause I'm not going to try to make you one thing. I you saw with what was some of the non-negotiables am I allowed to ask? Oh, I mean, non-negotiable to me, anything, but for us, for you, yeah, yeah for oh, you, um, being mm-hmm. being spoke too disrespectfully, mm-hmm. being cursed at. I don't, I don't curse. I don't curse at you. You're not going to curse or disrespect me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, when mm-hmm. we, you know, when we speak, my wife was a teacher and selfish, and you know, um, hence eleven proposals. Um, eleven proposals. Yeah, well, my wife was very, um, very, demanding, very controlling. Yeah, because of her uh, upbringing, because of her, yeah. sort of, because of her guarding, being guarded. Mm-hmm. That's me. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't knock her for that. No, but I could also, but I could also state what I wasn't going for and yeah. why. And like, this it's not going to work. Once yeah. you give a non-negotiable, you have to have a why behind it. Yeah. It just can't be a non-negotiable like this is what I. But why? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why are you this way? And that's what people don't want to get to. They don't want to get to the why. Or yeah. and then the understanding of the why. I was gonna say because they sometimes they don't know they their don't, why either. And this and that leads into like one of the things as far as um mm-hmm. self worth either even the gender role, yes, in, in a relationship plays exactly or in self worth. Yeah, like you when you just say you being on borderline OCD, I'm born on OCD. So guess what, my wife is not. So when people come into uh-huh. our house, they notice what we do. They be like, man, you have a, you have a very clean house. My wife, you have Joaquin cleans. They be like, what? Huh? Yeah. What? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, and this will always tell people, they're like, man, you do this, you do that. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, look, look, I was doing this when I was single, and I like it done a certain way. Yeah. Not saying that she can't do it, but guess what? So why should I stop now that I'm married? Mm-hmm. It's his strength. She, and she loves it being my strength. I love that it's she's his gonna, strength. She's always going to up with my strength. Yeah. Because like, she does not like doing it. Babe, that's your strength. Do and, it. And guess what? It comes from past traumas. Mm-hmm. My wife doesn't like clean, washing dishes and stuff for certain reasons because of past childhood traumas. Mm-hmm. Wow. So it works out for us that I love mm-hmm. doing it because it you reminds like me of what I indeed. love. Yeah. I love working with things, remind me yeah. of my grandparents and working and doing certain things. So that works for me and it's like therapeutic time for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But knowing but knowing your self-worth um, when it comes to gender roles, even um, who's defining in your, what strength? Yeah, my my strength, one of our strengths in my in our marriage is on finances. 
Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. the saver. I'm the planner for finances like this. My wife will tell you, when coming into our marriage, she had a lack of respect for money. Mm-hmm. Wasn't that she was good at it. She was, she was good at spending it. She was good at yeah. making it. You know, she was spending it. Mm-hmm. And she was spending it unconsciously, once again, not thinking about what we're in. So we had to sit down and have goals and um, um, markings that we want to hit toward the year. Yes. So Joaquin's strengths are all domestic, like finances, uh, you know, taking care of the home. <laughs> and, and that's that's Hold different on. for people when you talk about defining Hold gender on, roles. On, yeah, no, n- normally the, the majority is that the woman is more <laughs> domestic, woman. but not all, not all. Not all. Yeah. No, 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 not even close. No, I'm very career driven. Like yeah. I'm very career driven. And um, you find more men who are career driven because what they were defined as men to be the providers, Mm -hmm. to be the protectors, to go out, bring home the bacon, make sure the wife is cooking the bacon and all that kind of stuff. (laughs) So when we talk about gender roles, a lot of people now, especially today, in these blended families. You know, yes. today is totally different. Yeah. Like, it doesn't look like it did back in the 60s no. and the yeah. 70s. Both when parents are working, working, or a lot of times yeah. the woman now is earning more money and she's out and the men exactly. take care. It's, it's, yeah. Exactly. So when you talk about, when you talk about, you know, these gender roles and defining who's going to do this, who's going to maintain the yard and who's going to get up the car service and all these kind of stuff. Now, granted, Joaquin still does all of that. He does the lawn work outside of everybody was like, so what do you do? Like, I do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't do anything. No, no, no I no. help I help him run the business. Yes. Yeah. And it, it, it works for us. Like my us. the way my mind is is geared, and Joaquin is the same way now. He's his mind is always going. My mind is always going when it comes from a parenting perspective mm-hmm. and when it comes to business. Yes. Got Those it. two things is where Got my it. mind always lives yes like my mind lives there from a parenting perspective what do we do and how many kids do you have again and what four 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 okay yeah so yeah. we have two girls and um, that's megan and morgan and they're my daughters that i bought into the relationship yeah. with their kids they're my daughters. Uh-huh. and believe it or not they're about to be 23 and, and 19 one just turned 19 and one yeah. just turned 19 oh gosh now do y'all live together as well so do the kids the or Yes. The girls, they they uh, they recently moved out. Um, yeah. Megan has been out on her own for three, almost three, almost years, three now. years now, mm-hmm. and Morgan is a she's a freshman in college. Yeah, wow. So, yes. Yeah, and so we have the boys at home that are nine and twelve. Okay, and that's Madison Landon, and woo, honey, <laughs> when I tell you raising girls and raising boys, two totally different worlds. Yeah, so I have a four and six year old and I want to cry most days. All they do is fight and fight and destroy and rip things apart. It's brutal. And I hear girls are so much better. But then I hear when the girls become teenagers, it's much harder. I'm going to tell you, well, it was hard for me, period. (laughs) (laughs) I I thought I had it hard when we had, when the girls were the, the focal point, but I have it harder than that with the boys. Yeah. Because now my yeah. wife, my wife is just a sucker. Uh, she's a sucker. Oh my God. She was she was hard on the girls. I was oh, hard on the these girls. boys, man, uh, they, they get away with they murder. They could do no I'm, wrong. <laughs> if I'm not around these boys, I'm gonna get away with murder. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? So you're yeah. the disciplinary now, right? Oh yes. yes. Yeah. And I'm the one that says, okay, let's have a conversation. <laughs> let's talk about, you know, why you did this and did it bring any value to your life? Did you yeah. benefit from this? And what did you learn? You know, that's how I am. But I've always been that way as well. But I was a little harder on the girls mm-hmm. than I am on the boys, especially that nine-year-old, y'all. Yeah. Like, he's and big, even- that, that nine-year-old is like, he know he's the last one. I yep. know. Well, I had my my aunt who was like a nana to my first son tell me that about the, the four-year-old, you're ruining him. I said, What? Because I wouldn't um what was it about when he was drawing something? Oh, and I offered to help and he had a fit. And I was like, No, no, let me help you. It's okay. She said, You're ruining him by giving in to him by still drawing with him. And I'm like, my baby. <laughs> <laughs> Well, That's me. Yeah. Well, we have two babies. Our 23 year old, almost 23 year old, yeah. she was still coming to the house and, and crawl up in her mom's lap. Like mm-hmm. she's a baby. She and, I, and I love their relationship. Um, and the nine year old, he is like stuck to her all the time. Yeah. That's, 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 man, that's our baby. Yeah. Literally. Um, <laughs> even, even with that, with self worth, we have yeah. to start putting yeah. their self worth in them when they are mm-hmm. young. So, 
My and girls, how do you my, do that? What type of you know tips could you give us for our parents out oh, there? Man, really, um, date night. I love okay. date night with my girls. Mm -hmm. I used to I used to take them on dates and we would date and I would date them, showing them how a man should treat them, mm -hmm. how a man should show them respect. Opening the but door, we were, yeah, helping them, do. the napkin yeah. on the lap, like yes. Mm -hmm. And I told my girls, I used to I would tell my girls, once we allow you to start dating, if if a young man does not want to do these certain things, these small little things, just call me. I'll come get you. Mm -hmm. I said, because you have to train people how to treat you, yeah. not be a butthole, not be a yeah. you know, jerk, but train people how to treat you because this is mm -hmm. your self-worth. Mm -hmm. Because once you start, once you start compromising it and you think, well, that wasn't so bad, you start compromising even more mm -hmm. and more and more. Mm -hmm. And once you're, when you're dating this teen years, those are not things that you should compromise mm -hmm. because that's, you're defining who you're going to be and what you were willing to um, give up just to yeah. have status or something and that shouldn't be compromised until you're married no mm -hmm. yeah, i would yeah. say there, there's a there's a there's there's a certain kind of selfishness i think all people should have until they're married until they're married tell me sure. tell me what's the certain and selfishness it's about, it. about if I want, knowing what you want yeah if i'm single yes. and i want to just spend all my money i can do that yeah mm -hmm. And teaching you, I'm sorry, baby, no. teaching, teaching our kids how to treat themselves. Take yourself yes. out to a nice, expensive restaurant. Yes. Okay. Go to a movie by yourself. Oh, if, gosh. You're willing, if you're willing to spend that money on yourself, somebody else will be willing to do the same thing for you. Yep. And I'm going to be honest with you. Joaquin taught me that. Joaquin taught me that about myself. <laughs> and let me tell you how he taught me. <laughs> I was living in um, this duplex. Okay. And my side needed to be mold. Okay. And I'm going to be honest with you. I was straight, like, you know, prissy. Like, I'm not doing this. Bougie. Like, like I don't Bougie. do this. Like, I don't do this. Capital B. Uh -huh. Like, I don't do this and I don't do that. And, you know, somebody's going to do it for me. I, I'm just being real. Like I told you, I was selfish. I was spoiled. Like, tremendously spoiled as a child. Um, unlike my siblings were. And so he tells me, your yard needs to be mowed. And I was like, okay, and, I don't, I don't mow yards. And it was like, the look she gave me. And she was like, I don't like, look like, like somebody will do it. And like, I was like, who are you yards. supposed to be? I said, I'll tell you what. Yeah, he did. And um, what did I do? He told me, he was like, uh, oh, that yard won't get mowed. He said, it will not get mowed until you try it. This dude <laughs> brings a lime, a, a walking mold. Push a walking push one. one. A, a push <laughs> one. I'm sorry. As you, can say, as you can say, I don't do it. It's the push more. Okay. Yeah, a push more. <laughs> got it. Push more over to my house and leaves it. Leaves it. Ooh. And he was like, it won't get done unless you do it. I had to get out there and mow my own yard. Wow. How did it feel? Gee. Sucky. But then yeah. did you kind of enjoy it a little bit? No. Mm -hmm. I didn't. <laughs> hey, but I did it. It looked a mess too. It looked Ooh. a hot mess. So what um, happened? Then he comes back and sees you did it. And then he comes back, he saw I did it. I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy at all. Mm -hmm. And I let him know, but he didn't care. He didn't care about what happened. It got done. And he came back. I was at work. And I think I had class that night. Yeah. I had class that night. So I don't, I didn't necessarily come to my apartment from work because I worked on campus. So uh -huh. I would leave campus to go straight to class. And I got home that evening and realized I was like, something is different about my yard because it didn't look this good when I left this morning. <laughs> oh, so he, he, yeah, he come, he mowed my, um, my yard it the right way or you did the side, right. he did the back. No, no. he did it. He did the, the whole thing. The whole thing. Wow. He did the front, the side and the back. So, and that's yeah. how you all like started. Yeah. The and he, connection. And he, with, and, and he shared with me, he says, look, he says, it wasn't that you don't do yards. He said, it was the way you said it and the way you looked when you did it. He was like, oh. don't ever think that somebody is going to do something for you that you won't do for yourself. That's beautiful. Taught you a big lesson that you're teaching your kids and teaching others. Okay. And I'm sure you're dealing with this, the couples you're working with, because some of us think that way yes. and it's this, not this, right, but we don't see it. It takes someone like that to open your eyes to something. Yeah. And this, wow. is, this is what I loved about, you know, Stacey. I loved her. I love her confidence. I loved mm -hmm. her, um, her, um, her bouginess. Snarkiness. Yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> but I loved it in the way it was challenging. Yeah. But, this and, what but you also at the same time wanted to help her. Like, you yeah. know, this woman's not going to survive in the world like this. She's not going to well, have many this, friends, many, and you didn't know anything about her, but you could tell. Yeah, you oh, yeah. Know? yeah. And, and I knew that she didn't care anything about that. Yeah. She didn't care anything about that. She didn't, that, but, I, but. Yeah. And this is what I used to, this what I used to tell her. I said, look, um, I don't know where this is going to go. But I said, one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to be real with you. 
Yeah. And this is one thing about me. I don't mind saying, look, it's been good. How was you later? And Stacy wasn't used to that. Stacy was used to men. Men. To her. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I don't, once again, I'm a prize. What a perfect too. match. You are. Yeah, and by the way, I apologize, but we are out of time. Oh, are you yeah, serious? Really? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thirty something minutes already. Yeah, it happened. So right. I apologize. It's been a great conversation, a great yeah. show. Yeah. Wish we had an hour. Uh, remind our listeners how we can contact you. Please. All right, blendedandwinning.com. Okay. And in the next two weeks, you will see a whole new <laughs> site go up yes. for Blended and Winning as we have some things coming. Um, YouTube, go and subscribe to YouTube. We have some phenomenal Perfect. things coming in 2022. That's Joaquin and Stacey Loper. You can find us on TikTok at That Loper Lady. Perfect. And also on Instagram at Blended underscore and underscore winning. Yes. Thank you so much, guys. You have a great day and fantastic conversation. Thank, Thank you for you. your time. And to all of our listeners, please stay tuned. More of the show is on the way. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.